First of all, the footage you're watching is my attempt at different intervals to capture what I see happening on the daily when I missed my Vanderpole. How the dry roots respond to moisture, how the roots move when water hits the velamen and gets absorbed. As I have to grow the majority of my orchids in pots, I only have these vandacious orchids with so many different roots to study and, well, these orchids and their roots are my muse. Here is where I stand and mist and ponder such questions that take a long time to get a plausible answer for over years of observing, even attempting to predict where a root will choose to branch and why. I took this image back in September of 2022. Yes, that is how long I've had this video in mind. So I hope that I'm going to do this topic justice by bringing this video out now. <laughs> but yeah, I took this image in 2022 so that I could possibly prove a point. These two roots were my study amongst all the rest, but I was keeping an eye on them in the hopes that I could conclude what I was thinking at the time by constantly monitoring what they are doing. Not wanting to miss the moment and predict what will happen where based on my observations with other roots that I, of course, did not photograph. If you have been on my channel for any length of time, I want to thank you for the support all these years. But if this is the video that brings you to my channel for the first time, then let me tell you, orchid roots drive me crazy. When they grow with whatever color the root tips are, I go nuts about them. I go nuts trying to keep every root tip growing for as long as possible, and it makes me so happy when I see a root tip reactivating into active growth. What really drives me crazy is when I accidentally snap them or put my thumb over a tip that is crawling around on the lip of a pot. And the biggest thing that was driving me crazy all these years, in a good way, was the question, what are the freckles for? I call them freckles. And also, why do we not see freckles on all roots even once the velamen is wet? So this video will answer those questions and I hope that the information will open another whole world of appreciation for you and your orchid growing observations. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Welcome to the patio. Welcome to a video in which we are going to be unveiling the mystery that is, why do most orchid roots have visible freckles on damp velamen? Do they serve a specific purpose? Or do they just give us a signal that the velamen is saturated enough and we can stop watering? And if they do serve a purpose, what would that be? And why don't all orchid roots display these freckles once the velamen is damp? I hope that you will consider giving this video a like. A super thanks is also greatly appreciated. As well as if you were to take a moment to subscribe to the channel, maybe share this video. I thank you for the additional support. So let me draw your attention to and talk about the freckles on the velamen. You see, the root tips catch our eye, but for years now, I have been studying my Vanda totem pole and other bare root orchids. The root growth behavior, how the layman responds, doesn't respond, when roots go dormant, then reactivate, and in doing so, I have seen the white spots that we can discern on the layman, which is not that compact, as in the layman layer is thinner and had my theory about what their function is. As I share my thoughts with you, I would love to hear from you what you think about them. Do you agree, disagree, have any conclusions of your own? And if you do, please add them in the comments. Anyway, I call them freckles, but in truth, the scientific name for these spots is pneumothodes. Pneuma translated from the Greek is wind, air, or breath, and thodes meaning as in pertaining to. So these pneumothodes function in the same way as stomata on the leaves. They are the breathing mechanism for orchid roots, a band or pore of aerating tissue. And the reason they show up when the velamen is damp is because they are the non-saturating part of the velamen that allows for gas exchange to continue while the velamen is otherwise saturated. If these pneumothodes were to not exist, the roots would suffocate, which makes me think of how the velamen evolves in different setups and ways of growing orchids, the choice of media, etc. You see, even fowls that are grown in water culture will present the pneumothodes on the velamen when saturated. It's not as evident as in white spotting, but if you look at a root that is grown in water culture, you will see the darker saturated root, while in some cases, some parts of the velamen show up lighter. That is where the pneumothodes are. Less developed, but they are there and can still function when permanently damp, same as in any other semi-hydroponic growing setup. And you will see the same when you get your fowls and sphagnum moss and the roots are permanently wet. You will see the emerald green signaling a saturated root, but also the white pneumothodes that look like they have been embroidered in form of a straight stitch. Now you are probably wondering, and 
What's the big deal? Well, as I said earlier, I have questions as I missed my bare root orchids and if I can answer them for myself, I think that someone else might have similar curiosity. So if this is you, I hope that you have another understanding of your orchid roots and how they do what they do. Does it change the way you should grow your orchids? That is a question that I'm still working on because my thought is, if we could understand how to work with an orchid that presents pneumothodes in high quantity as opposed to another orchid that shows less of them, then will that help us with understanding what is the best way to grow an orchid based on how many pneumothodes the roots present? My current thought on that question is, the more pneumothodes a root system presents, the more conducive to a wet-dry cycle culture the orchid is and vice versa. The less pneumothodes that present themselves on an orchid root system, the more conducive to consistent access to water the orchid culture needs to be. I hope that makes sense. As a final thought, the older the root system is, even even while it is viable, the more algae will grow on the roots and the velamen starts to get woody. But the pneumothodes are still doing their job underneath because you will see really old roots starting to branch out of nowhere. Well, out of nowhere, not quite, because the tissue of pneumothodes is completely different to that of the rest of the velamen, as we previously mentioned, and upon closer inspection, it is precisely at the point of a pneumothode that the root will branch, no matter the age, no matter how woody the velamen is. And here are some examples. And yes, that is why I took this image back in 2022, because I wanted to watch the points where the pneumothodes are based on where the water collects during watering, in my case, by form of misting. While these two roots did not comply to my experimental observations, other roots did, and you can see a little white discoloration, which is the pneumothode, and then you can see a new tip starting. The root is branching. And I have a plethora of examples like these all around the root systems of these two vandas, as well as my angraecoids, which I hope I was able to photograph clearly enough for you to see. Also, combine a pneumothode to where the root has a downward curve, where the water droplets collect before they drop. The combination of these two occurrences are a great place for a root to branch, seeing as the longer concentration of the water, possibly including nutrients, softens the pneumothodes even more, triggering branching. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you've made it this far, thank you. I appreciate your time. Let me do a quick update on my observations of having used TNC microhydro on these orchids. In the meantime, you will also be seeing images and compare what I'm showing you to what I mentioned previously about pneumothodes and where there is a branching point. Now, I cannot conclude any great results of the orchids that I inoculated with the beneficial bacteria back in December of 2023 because it takes a long time to notice any difference when the orchids are potted up and not being unpotted again and again just for inspection's sake. But these vandas were my guinea pigs when it came to using TNC microhydro on bare root orchids and well. While I stopped using the product in May because I wanted to avoid the velamen staining, the explosion of roots branching, new roots growing and the insane growth these orchids have put on this season, I have to conclude that it is because of TNC microhydro. I'm trying to show you some then and now footage, especially of my water container, which has water roots of these two vandas. Once they grew long enough, I think I started putting them into this water container in 2019, but the images I'm showing you is from back in 2023 and the first clean of 2024 of this container which only gets fresh water every six months. And what I saw this year is nothing short of remarkable. The difference is astounding. The quantity of roots in that container has exploded as well. I have branching everywhere. It almost appears I need a bigger container. Now, for argument's sake, we can also consider the age of orchids and how they grow more new roots because they have more structures, more energy to grow roots, etc. And while this is absolutely feasible that age plays a big role on how much new root production an orchid can come up with, it does not explain the new roots growing on the stem where others have had already grown. Double roots out of the same area. I have new fans starting on areas of the stem that have already produced branching growths where the stem cracked on the main orchid. More fans are growing and the Papilionanthe also has two new growths. 
at the base where there has not been any activity for years. I also have had the pleasure of watching ancient roots branching. Roots that looked like they were twigs and dried up have branched and even on heavily algae covered roots, the root tips this year were a joy. But we're not done yet because the top of each orchid is going nuts with a new root count that is double of what is the norm for these orchids in the years I've been studying them. And well, what do you know? How about this spike on a fan at a place where there has never been a spike before and really there shouldn't be a spike anymore because the orchid blooms from nodes that are on the younger part of the new growths at the top. This is insane and the only different thing I did with this orchid since December 2023 for the first six months I applied TNC Microhydro. The orchids absorbed the product and benefited greatly from it and once temperatures cooled down a bit and I'm not at risk of staining the velamen because of the seaweed discoloration, I will be back using TNC Microhydro throughout the fall and winter. When it comes time for us to repot the orchids in pots that were inoculated, we shall see if there are similar results. I cannot say that I've seen better progress in the potted orchids, the way I have had the pleasure to observe the Vandas on the west side. Even my little Vanda No ID went mental with new fans and an insane burst of new and branching root activity. Absolutely amazing. So, I hope that you enjoy seeing pneumothodes on your orchid roots and now that you have a better understanding of what these freckles are all about, maybe you can start your own little guessing game of where your roots are going to branch based on what I shared. Even though my two candidate roots did not do as I wanted to predict that they would, there were plenty of other examples that proved what I have been observing and with that, see if you can't start looking at the curves where the water pools, does it coincide with a pneumothode, and predict that your root is going to branch right there. I am having a great time now as I continue misting these orchids because time and time again, I see the branching based on these two factors. I have to up my prediction game though, <laughs> because I'm working hard to get this specific stick of a root to branch as well. It is defying me for now while similar looking roots have branched, so watch this space. I appreciate you watching to the end. The video has been in the making since 2022, so I hope that it was worth the wait and the information provided was of value. Thank you for your time while I geeked out over a root system that I've been caring for to the best of my ability since 2018. I hope you enjoyed spending time on the channel and with that I sincerely hope you come back or watch another video in the Masterclass series in which we do deep dives into topics that need a little bit more explaining then just do this, do that, and the other. Have yourself a beautiful day on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Oh, this is so much fun. The roots that I was documenting since 2022. <laughs> One of them is schooling me that, once again, orchids do not know what rule of thumb means, because while this root is branching on a curve, which I suspected is the most viable place for it to do so, it is branching on an upward curve. But wait, I haven't debunked my own observations entirely because it is branching where there is a pneumothode. <laughs> Isn't this just the most amazing hobby? <laughs> Bye.